I've got a nice new knife here from the folks at Bear and Sons Cutlery down in Alabama. This is the Bear Swipe 4, which is the latest model of their Bear Swipe knives. If you're like me, you're most of the guys that I know, you carry a knife all the time. I always carry two knives because you never know when you're going to need them for different purposes. I've been carrying this Bear Swipe 4 around for a little while. It carries nicely and it's very utilitarian, very easy to use. The weight is only 3.7 ounces. The closed length of it is four and a quarter inches. The open length of it is seven and a half inches. And the blade length is three and a quarter inches. The blade is made from Sandvik 14C28N steel, which is a high carbon stainless steel. And it holds its edge very well. It comes from the factory with a nice edge on it and it really does hold its edge well. I've done a lot of cardboard cutting. Use it for things that you're not necessarily supposed to use a good knife for, but that's just the way I am. I use knives for all kind of applications, and that's why I've always got at least one knife on me. The blade is hardened to Rockwell 58 to 60, and you can get this model with either a bead blasted finish on the blade or a blackened finish on the blade. I like the blackened finish myself. The blade is a modified drop point design, which to me is just perfect. I love a drop point design. And the way they taper the grinds on this is just right. The back of the blade of the spine features a serrated area for you to bear down on, get some power behind that when you need to. And there's also a nicely formed guard right here in front so that it doesn't slip down onto your finger. This is an assisted opening design and it works really well. They've got the little assisted opening stud right here. When you pull it, you just flip that and you're good to go. It also has thumb studs on either side of the blade. Makes it easier to deal with that way if you want to open it that way. The handle is made from black and green G10 material, so it's very tough, but still very lightweight. Thus, the weight of the entire knife is only 3.7 ounces. Really easy to tote around. It has a belt clip on it, which is reversible to either side. In addition to the reversible clip, there's a lanyard loop here on the base of it, or you can carry this in a universal sheath. It's very versatile in that regard. In fact, it's small enough and lightweight enough where you can carry it in your pocket if you want to. And there's a stainless steel liner inside the handles that includes a frame locking mechanism so that it locks open positively every time. This is a well-designed, durable, utilitarian knife handcrafted in Alabama by Baron Sons and those boys down in Alabama know how to make a knife. They know how to use a knife. It's handy, it's lightweight, it's everything you need and nothing that you don't need. 100% made in the USA and reasonably priced. There are two models of this knife available. You can either get a bead blasted blade on this for $97.99 or for $2 more, $99.99. You can go for the black finish on the blade, which is what I opted for. These are very nice knives. Check them out at Baron Sons Cutlery. What I've got here is the latest thing from the folks at Olight. This is the Balder SBL, BL standing for blue laser. It's kind of a unique thing. Most lasers are either red or green. The blue laser is claimed to be between the brightness levels of the red and the green. The green can be kind of overbearing. So the blue laser is seen as a good compromise between that. It also doesn't draw quite as much power as a green laser, so it extends your battery life there also, while remaining more easily visible than a red laser. And I find that to be true. The blue laser is really easily visible. The Balder S also has a light in it. The light is really nice, 800 lumen light. Plenty enough light to turn night into day. This Boulder SBL is what they call a desert tan finish, which is really more like a bronze finish than it is a sand color, but it's a very attractive finish on this. The unit is made from aircraft grade aluminum, really tough stuff. It's really quality manufactured. It's built to last. I've used a bunch of Olight stuff in the past. I've never had any problems with them. They make really good stuff at really affordable prices. 
I tested the Boulder Pro not too long ago, and this shares the innovative mounting system of the Boulder Pro. Olight is really innovative with their mount designs. This is no exception. You flip a lever on this, you stick it on your rail, you flip the lever back, and you're good to go. It's just that easy. It comes with a Glock rail piece installed. Also included in the package is a 1913 Picatinny spec piece that you can put on there very easily. So this will work on anything that's got a pick spec or a Glock spec rail on it. Very versatile, and very easy to use. It takes a second to snap these things on and off securely. To show you how easy and quick it is to mount this laser light combo, I've got a Taurus G3 XL here with me. I chose this one because it has a very short rail under it with only one slot, but it's just this quick and easy to snap this thing on. You just snap it on there, flip your lever, and you're good to go. You want to take it off, you just flip your lever back, press it, there it is taking off just as easy. Olight is always coming up with innovative mounting solutions, and they've really done it right with the Balder SBL. The unit is really small and lightweight, easy to use, easy to mount on a variety of different kinds of rail systems. The overall length of it is a little under two and a half inches. The overall width of it is a little under inch and a half. The lens itself is an inch in diameter. The whole thing weighs about three ounces. It's waterproof to IPX4 specifications. It's very quality made. There are three modes of operation easily switched on the bottom of the unit with this switch right here. First of all, there's laser only which is just that easy to do. Then you switch it over one time, you have a laser and light combo. Then you push it to the third one and you've got the light only. It's just that easy to switch between modes on this thing. And the unit has a dual tail cap switch on it, so it's ambidextrous in operation. To activate it, you just bump either one of the switches. And to turn it off, you just do the same thing. If you press and hold the switch, you've got a momentary mode that'll stay on as long as you hold that. Also, there are two intensity levels for the light. You've got an 800 lumen, and then if you double tap the switch, you've got a 100 lumen. Switches back and forth just that easily. The 800 lumen light projects to 426 feet, so you can take care of whatever you need to take care of at night. So you get over two hours of continuous lighting on a charge, and it'll take you a while to use up two hours of continuous lighting. When it comes time to charge it, there's a magnetic charger that snaps right onto the bottom with a magnetic clamp. It can be charged either on or off of the rail. It takes a couple hours to charge it up, and then you're good to go again. This Boulder SBL blue laser and white light combo is brand new they've just introduced these and as olight often does they are heralding their new introduction with a special deal if you get on olight's website which is olightstore.com this desert tan version is brand new and is retail priced at 129.99 for a limited time you can get 30 percent off of that which makes it 90 dollars and 99 cents that's a great value for a great product that sale on Olight's website is going to run for a week. It will start on November the 20th, and it will end on November 27th at midnight Eastern Standard Time. That is 11.59.59 p.m. Eastern Time on November the 27th. So get on to olightstore.com and check these out, along with Olight's other fine products. They really do make a dandy light, and they represent a great value. got something cool to show you today and this is something that all shooters really should have one of is a good trigger pull gauge I've used trigger pull gauges for many years to accurately record the weights of trigger pulls as triggers are getting worked on or if you're just testing guns or whatever it's an invaluable tool to have I started out using the old spring type trigger pull gauges basically like a fish scale and uh, 
then I went to the uh, Lyman digital trigger pull gauge a few years ago and that thing worked great. What I've got today is a new one from the folks at Ready Up Gear. These are available on concealedcarry.com. This is the Ready Up Gear digital trigger pull gauge. There are several really cool features about this trigger pull gauge. First of all, it records a lot more data than other trigger pull gauges do. Uh, it allows you to have a running total of, I don't even know how many trigger pulls it'll hold. I've never run to the end of it yet. And I've been using this thing probably for six months. It records trigger pull weights and records them accurately. I've tested it against my other trigger pull gauges and it's right in there with them. It'll record accurate trigger pulls from zero to 12 pounds. After 12 pounds, you're kind of on your own, but that's true for pretty much any trigger pull gauge. You get to a ridiculous pull weight, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good. Also, for you guys who are into the metric system, it records in kilograms as well as in pounds and ounces. It has two basic modes, peak mode and live mode. In peak mode, it records your different trigger pulls. It keeps a running total of how many trigger pulls that you've had since you cleared it out. And it also... Uh, records your maximum and your minimum and calculates the average for you. In live mode, it pretty much just gives you the live reading of the trigger pull. I find the peak mode to be a whole lot more useful. I usually pull at least five trigger pulls to get a good average on the thing. And the display on this will show you the maximum, the minimum, and the average, as well as the number of trigger pulls used to calculate that. So it gives you a whole lot more data than just the current trigger pull. It's really easy to use. It runs on two AAA batteries that are not included, but it's got a little battery door here in the back. It's really easy to put the batteries in this thing. The tool just weighs a few ounces, and it's made in an impact-resistant plastic casing. Uh, I have dropped this thing numerous times, not on purpose, but I've accidentally dropped this thing numerous times haven't had any problem whatsoever it's still ticking as the old commercials used to say this is an invaluable tool for anybody who wants to keep track of such things the trigger pull weights it's really easy to use I've got here a custom Ruger single six made by brother shooters Bob Bear I bought it from his estate after he passed it's really neat he's got a two and a half inch barrel he's milled the ejector off of it he's uh, reconfigured the rip frame he's contoured the top strap he's got a lanyard in it it's just a really neat little single six easily packable just a neat little single six kit gun so I thought I'd try it on this to use the Ready Up Gear digital trigger pull gauge, the first thing you want to do is make sure that the gun is unloaded. And secondly, you want to make sure that there is no ammunition anywhere within reach. Trust me on this. I've had this happen to me before. Once you determine that there's no way this thing's going to go off, you can get to work on the trigger pull. To do that, you just power the unit on. Make sure it's set to pounds or kilograms, however you want it to be, and to peak or live mode as you want it to be. Then you insert the little arm into the trigger guard, and it's easiest if you use a finger to control the push of that thing. You get that. Then if you want to accept that value, you press enter, and you go to the next one. And again, press enter if you don't want to accept that value that's really easy to do too let's say you pulled one wrong or something there's a little de delete button right here you hit that delete button and it deletes that value without deleting what you've done before so you just go on to the next one enter that value then you do this and keep doing the same thing to as many trigger pulls as you want to get a good average I usually use at least five and I find that works really well once you get through with your trigger pulls you enter that final trigger pull then you'll see on your display the maximum and the minimum and the number of trigger pulls you hit the mode button and it'll bring you to the average it's that easy to use and to clear it out you can either turn it off or you can just press and hold the delete key for a couple of seconds and it clears out your memory for you. These are very easy to use and all the cool features of it, the coolest feature of all is the price. 
Digital trigger pull gauges typically are not really cheap. They're not a whole lot of money, but when you start spending ammo money or gun money or something on that for tools like this, the less you can spend on these sort of things, the better, as long as they're good and this is good. The price on this is only $29.99, which is less than half of what the other digital trigger pull gauges are going to cost you. This is the Ready Up Gear digital trigger pull gauge. It's a full featured, inexpensive tool that every shooter should have. They're available on concealedcarry.com. Ha, ha, ha.